Hello everyone, this is the Mass Analyst. Over the past couple of weeks or so, I've discussed Rule 512F of the DMCA. This is a rule that states that if somebody files a DMCA complaint against you, and they did so uh, while knowingly misrepresenting that your video or that your copyrighted work infringed upon their copyright, then you can turn around and sue them for legal damages and other damages. And I've discussed a couple of cases in this uh, regard. OPG versus Diebold and Rossi versus the MPAA. They come to somewhat different conclusions about what it means exactly to knowingly rep misrepresent that your work infringes upon theirs. And the key word is knowingly. I'd like to discuss another case, Lens versus uh, Universal Music Corporation. But before I do that, I have to clarify a few terms, and I have to. Uh, I want to discuss how your rights are to use other people's works is coming under attack by some very powerful uh, lobbying interests, by some very powerful industry industrial groups. Primarily, I want to discuss the Copyright Alliance. Now, the Copyright Alliance is made up mainly of corporations within the entertainment industry. You've got your usual suspects, the Viacom, Disney, uh, Universal Music Corporation, National Football League. There are a bunch of them. What they have in common is a desire to curtail the right to fair use. Well, maybe that's a little bit too strong a statement. I don't know for a fact that every company within the Copyright Alliance wants to, compare, uh, to compromise your right to fair use. But I do know that the Copyright Alliance as a whole certainly does. Let me read you a statement by the Executive Director of the Copyright Alliance, Patrick Ross. Now this is going to sound like a lot of legalistic mumbo jumbo. I'll discuss it more uh, after I read this. He said, fair use is not a right. Copyright is a right. Fair use is a limitation on that right which is not absolute. Specific methods of fair use are defined in court and then only for that use. Fair use, then, is an affirmative defense. The user can cite in court if sued for infringement. As I said, a lot of legalistics sounding mumbo jumbo. Uh, what does he mean by fair use is affirmative defense? Well, a lawsuit starts out when someone files a, the plaintiff files a lawsuit uh, or a complaint against a defendant and the complaint has to list certain elements. It's kind of like a cookbook. It has to list, say, it has to state the defendant did A, B, C, D, or whatever in order to uh, have uh, standing for grounds of a, a lawsuit. You have to prove all the ingredients to show that a crime or misdemeanor or an offense has, has occurred. Now, the defendant can respond to this in several ways. You can either try and bargain with you and say, yeah, I did it. Let's let's try and settle out of court. Or they can say, no, no, I didn't do this. Or they could say, yeah, well, I did part A, but not part B, and not part, and I did part C, but not part D. And overall, yeah, you can show that I did some of the things, but taken together, they don't amount to an offense that you've got a, a uh, that you can win in court. You can't, you don't have a legitimate claim against me. Or, they could argue, yes, but. And that's what's known as an affirmative defense, the yes, but. Let me give you an example. In, if someone is charged with assault, or someone's suing you for assault, you could say, yes, I did it, and try and get by uh, with a uh, settle out of court. Or you could say, nope, didn't do it. Or you could say, yes, but you were uh, hitting me first, or yes, but you had a gun pointed to my head, I did it in self-defense. Well, in copyright, there are two elements of a copyright complaint. Uh, the plaintiff has to say, I own the copyright of this work, and you copied from it without my permission. Now, if I were writing the law, I would say that the plaintiff should uh, plead one other thing. They should have to say, not only did you copy from me without my permission, your copying didn't fall within fair use. That's the way that I think 
the law should be written. That's the way I would like to see the law written, but that's not the way it's written. The way it's written is once the uh, plaintiff raises those two points in a complaint, then the burden falls upon the defendant to raise, uh, to raise the issue of fair use. And so the defendant can raise that, and they may have to spend tens of thousands of dollars in court to actually prove that it's fair use. Maybe not if it's clear cut one way or the other, but it could very easily get quite expensive and time and time consuming. So that's what uh, is meant by an affirmative defense. And technically, uh, Patrick Ross, the head of the Copyright Alliance, is quite correct that fair use is an affirmative defense. However, I think he's wrong, very wrong, in a statement that copyright uh, that fair use is not a right. To back up my claim that fair use is a right, in addition to being an affirmative defense, I'd like to uh, quote from a document produced by the uh, Center for Social Media at the American University School of Communication. The document is called Code of Best Practices on Fair Use for Online Video. And they say, the cultural value of copying is so well established that is written into the social bargain of the heart of copyright law. The bargain is this. We as a society give limited property rights to creators to reward them for, for producing culture. At the same time, we give other creators the chance to use the same copyrighted material without permission or payment in, in some circumstances. Without the second half of the bargain, we could all lo we could all lose important new cultural work just because one person is arbitrary or greedy. Copyright law has several features that permit quotations from copyrighted works without permission or payment under certain circ uh, conditions. Fair use is the most important of these features. It has been an important part of copyright law for more than 150 years. Where it applies, fair use is a right not a mere privilege. In fact, as the Supreme Court has pointed out, fair use keeps copyright from violating the First Amendment. As copyright protects more works for longer periods than ever before, it makes new creation harder. As a result, fair use is more important today than ever before. Now, this was written by some of the best copyright lawyers in the country. So this is not just put out by a bunch of amateurs. There are some of the best lawyers in the country who specialize in copyright law. And speaking of one of the most illustrative copyright lawyers in the country, I'd like to read from a blog post by William Patry. Now, Patry's credentials will become evident as I read this post. He looked at the Copyright Alliance, and he saw how they cr uh, criticized and uh, not the code of best practices and fair use for online video. The quote that I just read stating that copyright, uh, that fair use is indeed a right. And he saw how they were attacking uh, this document. And here's what he had to say about that and what he had to say about uh, Patrick Ross, the head of the Copyright Alliance. He said, the Yiddish Aramaic word chutzpah is well known and has been defined variously as gall, audacity, insolence, insolence, and impertinence. Patrick Ross, head of the cartoonish Copyright Alliance, seems to have chutzpah in abundance, as seen in a blog post criticizing the Center for Social Media at American University for its release of a code of best practices in fair use for online video. The best practices are a future of public media project funded by the Ford Foundation, a fact Mr. Ross admits. Mr. Ross is not a lawyer, but formerly was with the Right Wing Progress and Freedom Foundation, which usually acts as a mouthpiece for copyright uh, for corporate copyright owners. I have no idea whether or where Mr. Ross attempts to learn about copyright law, much less fair use. For my part, I have been a practicing copyright lawyer for 25 years, and I have been studying fair use even longer, beginning in law school. In 1985, I wrote my first book on copyright, which was also the first book devoted just to fair use. The treatise's first citation was by the Supreme Court in, Harper and, in the Harper and Row case, issued shortly after the treatise came out. 
Subsequently, that treatise has been cited many more times by other courts. I have testified before a joint session of the IP, that's Intellectual Property Subcommittee of Congress, on fair use, worked on amendments to Section 107 as a congressional staffer, argued fair use cases in the courts of appeals and district courts, written an article about fair use with Judge Posner, advised many clients about it, and discussed the issue with the European Commission and many representatives of foreign governments. I am unaware of any qualifications Mr. Ross has to talk about fair use. Nor is Mr. Ross an educator. Yet regarding both fair use and education in his criticism of the center's best practices, he speaks as if he knows more than those who are copyright lawyers and educators, and some who are both. Beginning with a pompous, purported correction about the nature of fair use, scolding the center for daring to utter the term right in the same sentence as fair use. And it goes on. I'll post a link. But uh, talk about your total ownership here. Uh, uh, Patrick Ross, you were owned. Now, William Patry had good reason to criticize Patrick Ross. All you have to do is look at the Constitution and you'll realize that the purpose of copyright law is not to give the individual control over their work. That's just a means to the end. The real purpose of copyright law is to produce an environment conducive to the creation of new works. I've uh, talked about this in previous videos. I'll post a link to my blog site discussing this in more detail. And if you think about it, that's as it should be. I mean, how could we possibly have the free press necessary for a democratic system to thrive if we didn't have the right to quote from others? How can we become informed voters if editorial writers couldn't write uh, accurately by quoting politicians uh, in their writings and their speeches? There are message boards devoted to uh, criticizing corporate fraud. What they do, the people who post to these boards will quote from uh, corporate press releases, compare them to SEC statements, and they'll show how they don't match up with each other, how what the president has said in the past doesn't fulfill their expectations. Without fair use, this becomes very difficult. Without fair use, scammers can thrive. Fair use is the enemy of the scoundrel. That's because cockroaches love to live in the dark where the uh, sunlight doesn't shine. Fair use allows us to direct the sunlight toward the cockroaches. Now I've got one more piece of evidence, the perfect piece of evidence, to show that fair use is indeed a right. And I want you to quote this. Anytime some Yahoo tells you that fair use is not a right, it's an uh, affirmative defense. Section 108F4 of the Copyright Law states, Nothing in this section in any way affects the right of fair use as provided by Section 107. Let me read that again. Nothing in this section in any way affects the right. Hello? The right. The right. The right of fair use. You got it, Patrick? Anybody up there? Anybody up there, Patrick Ross? You got that? The right of fair use. Okay. Well, I hope I've made my point. This has been the Mass Analyst, under and in.